Today's plan, feed some animals, dunks going spraying, me and Kevin and Stuart who works for the digger man are all going to be cracking gravel. So we parked your house all me this morning. Morning Holly. So I'm just in the field of rape at the moment. Big break now. That's it. Wow. Ducklings are starting to grow now. Getting big. Uh, so these sheep, um, I'm just going to shift them from there into here. You can see the grass is getting pretty long in here. And the same, just one down there. So I'll split them into the two. And then we might just shift a couple of cows into there to keep it grazed. Lambs haven't caught on yet. And these gals are doing fine. Highlanders, they'll get shifted back up into this uh, paddock soon enough, um, just because the grass is starting to grow quite long in here, and through there it's quite short. Head out, give 167 a check. There she is, straight ahead. Some girl really just taking her time, but wonder what the calf's gonna look like. Hopefully, the calf's healthy and well. That's all that matters, really. The cow and the calf are healthy. It's quite late, regardless. So, I mean, the bull's meant to be going out in four or five days, so she will. Uh, shift her and another cow and calf into those pens over there to mow down the grass a wee bit for, I don't know, half a month or so and then we can bring them back in. Finally a bit of uh, warm sunshine. It's been uh, a long time coming. The cows are still a wee bit kind of skittery in the back end so uh, the vet was out the other day doing some other bits and bobs and she suggested it could be fluke. Um, so we're going to bring them in just now, treat them for fluke quickly uh, before we start cutting gravel. Just got a tractor as a gate. Need to use that later anyway, so got it out. They're not bothered, it's too hot and sunny, they won't move, so that's just getting a forklift, so we've got two pieces of kit to chase them. I think since it's nice and uh, hot, they don't really want to change the scene, they're quite happy. The other day when it was cold and wet, they were wanting to change the scene. They're not playing ball this morning. These are the last ones left. The three bandits turned around. Anyway, they're in now. I'm a bit, uh, I'm a bit sweaty now. So these have all been done, and the rest on that side is still to do. Just coming through here. I'm dozing them. Dad's bringing them round, shutting the gate behind. That's to come through. Uh, no, no, no. It's this one here. Pass is all done, so these are all going back in. The one that's pregnant and this cow and calf are going to go to a field on the other side of that shed. We're just shifting them over there. Um, the pregnant one, just so she's not running with the bull um, in a few days, and the other one, just going to feed her a wee bit and want the, the cow on her own to have a bit of company, otherwise, she might go a bit daft. Oh, she's going daft already. Back wing, 22 degrees. That's more like it. We're needing uh, needing heat for these plants to start growing. They're shifting gravel already, so I'll just join them once I've shifted these cattle. The black cow and calf that wasn't here uh, made a leap uh, and escaped. Luckily, we managed to get her back in that field and not heading up the road. Um, note to self, don't uh, pick the young one to be on its own. She's away over there. So put her in this field. Generally speaking, cattle don't like being alone, uh, they can go a bit nuts, um, so we try to keep them kind of with at least one other cattle beast, but the one we kept back um, 
was quite a young one. We should have kept an older one, but I wanted to keep that one to feed her a wee bit because she was a wee bit skinny. Um, but she jumped the fence and she's back in with the other ones. So she's now on her own. Hopefully the fact that the Highlanders are just a fence over and um, will calm her down and she can just um, kind of settle in. Right, back in the track tonight. Start cutting gravel with the other three guys who are going. And the four trailers going. Should keep us keep us busy. Um, it is absolutely boiling. It's 22 degrees. I'm sweating after being at those cows, but that's what we're after, the weather, so can't complain there. A nice road through the rape field now. Quite ideal like that. Good view. So we're shifting kind of more gravelly type stuff today. Uh, bigger stones rather than sandy compound. Um, just for the final kind of two foot, uh, two or three foot. It'll pack a lot harder, be a more solid layer for us. Face time now. A wee bite to eat and keep going. Um, Ian's just rolling it all in just now. He's dozing that off, just putting a nice layer across it. Roller will come in, pack it in, and we'll just keep going, carting more in in 20 minutes or so once he's finished leveling this off. That's the roller going there, vibrating and packing it in. Dumper's just about finished. He's got his laser on the top, so he's putting it all at the exact same level. I think that's been about 16 loads today so far. So, not a bad start to the morning. Um, it's now just after lunch. We'll go and start shifting again. Hopefully get another 20, 30 loads today. That'll make a good dent in it. We won't have much to do after that. So I'm just in the field of rape at the moment. Um, I'm trying to look for the bugs uh, we were talking about the other day um, to get rid of. So those two bugs, uh, they're pollen beetle and they're good. Uh, we like those bugs. They just um, increase the pollination rate through the crop. And then there's another one that looks exactly the same, but just grey in colour. We don't like them. Big breakdown. Um, prop shaft that runs to the front end of the tractor. I think possibly a bearing has collapsed. It was just on fire. Um, Stuart was just here with his tractor. He managed to quickly rush out with a bottle of water and put the fire out. But it's smoking away. The tractor's not movable at the moment, or don't want to move it. So we we'll just have to wait and see. Phone the garage and... Uh, seem to know exactly what the issue is, which uh, seems like it's a common occurrence, which it's a bit annoying. Um, so Dad's on his way, uh, need to make a decision as to whether we're going to nurse it at home, uh, nurse it back to the garage, or uh, whether it needs to be fixed as is. So that tractor's not moving. Um, Kevin's going to take the dumper off of it, edge his tractor forward, um, don't want to move it too far, and then I'll just take this jumper off and go and collect it so it's not sitting in the middle of the road. Uh, and then Ian here, who's got his diggers and whatnot, he's got a low loader uh, that he uses to shift kit about. So he's going to take low loader, pick up the tractor, take it to the garage for us. That's my dumper, dumped in the shed. Now on a rescue mission to get Kev's uh, tractor off the road to the garage and get his loader onto this tractor and going again with gravel. A bit annoying because we're getting a good good shift in today uh, of gravel but that breakdown's put us to pot again. Project recovery. It's got an abandoned trailer in the middle of the road. This is the fourth different uh, trailer I've had for cutting gravel. There's still one left to try. Still not had one full day at this uh, without a breakdown. Um, or rain to stop us, or something to stop us. We've got most of the day yesterday, but stopped early. Um, today, we've had just had a breakdown, so one tractor's not going, so that's us down to three trailers. Um, and the loader, the, the digger man has to go and shift the tractor with the loader, so he's out. So slowing us down, we need to load ourselves. So, a bit endless, but we're getting there. We leave them all uh, spaced out, so when the dozer hits them, um, he's not hitting a massive block at the same time, and it's pretty easy to push, and also keep off the edges, because it's easier to push it into the edge than bring it back from the edge. Just going to swing this way around the yard, because 
cows over in this field. Just check. Check how she's doing. Check she's not calved or anything. No change. An hour later, the exact same things just happened on this tractor as the last tractor. The prop shaft was just on fire about half an hour ago. Just been covering it in water for the last half hour and I'm just crawling it down to the neighbour's yard um, to leave it to cool down. Just putting this video together now and I didn't really show the fact that the tractor was on fire. I kind of, it's a horrible experience actually jumped out, right good panic in the system. I didn't appreciate how it felt because it happened to Kevin's an hour and a half before. I was like, I don't know, it's on fire, that's not good. But until it happens. You can see the amount of heat it's giving off. It's also burning um, grease and grease seals round about it. So basically, behind that casing, there's a shaft that rotates and a bearing we think has collapsed, causing loads of friction and loads of heat. It's abandoned until it cools down. So that's two tractors, with the exact same breakdown within two hours. They're not um, having to try any harder than they would do at harvest time. We've got 18 tonnes behind them then, um, running along the road. There's no difference to that. Um, the garage have obviously had a lot of issues, the exact same with the same brand of tractor, so it doesn't say a lot. It's going to be a big bill, I guess, to fix them times two. Getting a bit annoying now. We have a lot of breakdowns recently, so don't really know what we do from here. Nothing we can do. We need to just keep going and... They have lent as a spare tractor after two of them break down, broke down. They weren't really um, keen after just the one broke down. We're going to have to try different tractors in the future. Um, next time we're in the market for a tractor, we'll try a few different, demo a few, see what we think, look at the prices and whatnot. But they are just, just keep breaking down on us. Just seems to be another common fault with the... Uh, the tractors we've got in New Holland, so uh, I don't know, just winding us up now. They pull through, they've got us a tractor to, to use until ours get fixed. It's a wee bit smaller than the tractors we've got, a bit lower horsepower, but better than nothing. That's what we've got T7185, ours are T7210s. Um, this will be, I don't know, like 150, 145 horsepower, boosted to 185. Ah, it's not bad, it's nice and shiny. It'll do the job anyway tomorrow, shifting uh, gravel better than uh, our tractors at the moment, which are un unmovable. Today's question of the day, if we were to try some tractors on demo further down the line, not at the moment, um, what tractors should we try? Not done a shed update for a few days because Nothing's happened, but get had a bit of progress the last couple of days and it's starting to look a bit different now. So there you go, that pad is getting up to height. It looks like it's the right height, but it's actually still about two, at least two foot still to go. Some steel here has arrived, there's another load of steel here. One more load of steel to come, as well as all the roofing sheets and side panel sheets. It's getting there, it's starting to take shape. You can see kind of the outline of where it's going to be. Down there, down there. It's 100 by 200 foot. Uh, this shed is a 160 by 80 foot. So it's, uh, I don't know what that is, 40, 50% bigger than that, 40%. Anyway, so next job after this is brought up to level, the rest of these footings. So you can see these footings here and all the way along this edge. This edge down to here and the same down there have been done. So footings from there down the bottom and around the back and up. That's it's next stage after that gets leveled. Will you dare to